Yeah, did you see where some Indiana, Indiana kids that were on spring break attacked and oh, uh, yeah. they were getting gas and oh, somebody yeah. tried to rob them and, and they, they attacked them and they um, wrestled the blood from him and yeah. right. I thought, something good out of the Hoosier State. <laughs> That's taking a chance, though. That's a good idea. Um, this Sunday is the fourth Sunday in Lent. So this is Lent 4C, as, a Lent, as opposed to Lent 4B, which is one of my favorite Sundays in the church. Lent 4C is, is making its way up the ranks, is one of my favorite Sunday with the readings. Um, and so, uh, so we're Lent, four Sunday in Lent, so we're halfway through the season of Lent. So we are making our way toward that. Um, <laughs> right on time. Oh, <laughs> she's oh shoot, I'm not the last one here. There's a lot of I know. Well, she's play aren't you playing? T aren't you the organist today? Okay, because yes. okay, I, I thought you'd just be like preparing for that, which is fine. This is Lent 4C as opposed to Lent 4B, which is one of my favorite, but this is soon quickly becoming one of my favorite group of readings in the lectionary. Um, and so our first reading, Old Testament, is from Isaiah chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 6. And those who come on Wednesdays, um, you will go, we know these words, because it's the Old Testament canticle that we've been singing for during midweeks in Lent. So it's, you go, that you go, oh, yes, I, I know that one. So let's start out with verse 1. Um, you will say in that day, which would beg the question, what day? <laughs> well, let's go to the gospel reading, which is in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, um, it's the lost and found chapter. Uh, we have the lost and found sheep, the lost and found coin, and then the prodigal son, the very familiar prodigal son and the lost son and all that goes on. So, we, I mean, I mean, how many times have we heard this story? We're very familiar with it, or are we? And maybe not. Yes, Pastor Stecker. I'm working on this. So you right. Well, you're going to love when I get to, well, we talk about the best robe. And I say, what is your best robe that you have? What's your best robe that you have? The one at home that keeps no, me warm. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, who's who's the father in the story? Let's roll. Who's the who's the father <laughs> in the story? Sit down and come to my wife. What what best robe does he put on you? His righteousness. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to change your whole sermon. You, then I can take you're going to totally change I'm, your sermon. I'm working on this right now. <laughs> we come in here and join, join, us. Us. join us. Join us. Might as well. Anyway, very interesting. I, I got it well, in my head, and I'm thinking about it, and then I'm hearing a voice. Talk about the, the Lord spoke to you. <laughs> so, very familiar words. Luke chapter 15. I mean, the prodigal son. We, you know, we well, we think we know it. We'll just go on. I'm going to close the door so we're not interrupted. <laughs> Somebody else is there. You preach it. Come in. Uh. Pastor Shoemaker won't interrupt us because he's at the seminary. Oh. So he, he, he'll be preaching at 10 o'clock. No, listen to him. Uh, Luke 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near uh, to Jesus to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man uh, receives sinners and eats with them. So... What the Pharisees and scribes are saying, um, be careful with the company you keep because you will have a tendency to become those type of people. Yeah. That's what the thought is. Which is far you know, as we always tell our children, mm -hmm. be careful who you're hanging out with because yeah. bad apples make bad apples. Yeah. But not in Jesus' case. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you know, these tax collectors, you know, they were bad because they collected taxes for Romans, and then sinners, which is everybody else. So Jesus told them this parable. Parable, earthly story, heavenly meaning. Mm -hmm. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger one of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them, meaning the older and the younger son. 
Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey to, into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the field to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Now, we hear that, we go, oh, whatever. But if you're first century living in, in mm -hmm. Judea, Jerusalem, and Jesus said this, you ought to have went, oh, what, 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 the, the younger son demanded his inheritance? That meant the younger son wanted his dad to do what? Yeah. Die. He wanted him dead. <gasps> and what does the father do? Which is even more. more. <gasps> he, gave he gave it to him. Now everyone else would have said that father should have took a little slugger to that boy upside <laughs> his head and fixed him. But he doesn't. He has to make arrangements. That means he's got to sell stuff. He's got to liquidate. And so the son, the younger son, gets the money and he goes in the far off country and he squanders it on reckless living. Um, then a famine comes and he has, he has nothing. So he, he <coughs> hires himself out of all things to be a pig feeder. And he's so hungry that he's longing to eat what the pigs are eating. Well, what do pigs eat? Slop. 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 Yeah. They're, they're, they're in... in uh, Old Testament Jewish circles, they are unclean animals because they eat anything, anything. and everything. Sure. I mean, that's that they're unclean, unclean. So they would have went, un, I mean, d d d unclean. <laughs> so everybody's kind of, uh, you know, doing that. Verse 17. But when he came to himself, uh, the original language, when he came to his senses, <coughs> when he kind of went, whoa, what's happening? <coughs> he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread but I have perished here with hunger. I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired hands. And he, well, let's stop there for now. So he comes to his senses. He realizes that his father's workers are eating better than he is. So he, he's working on the speech. I'm going to go back. I'm going I'm to say... I've sinned. But was do you think he was really sorry? No. No. Because he's he's he gonna tell dad what, what needs to happen. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not really. But you're gonna hire me in so that I can eat. <laughs> so I squandered all your your stuff and now you're gonna take me back in and you're gonna take care of me. Why do you doubt that he's sincere? <laughs> Cut. We'll get to later. We'll get to later. I you, because he's telling he's making he's telling his father what to do. I mean, he's asking. His no, father, he's not asking. Have no, father, I have sinned against you. No, he's not asking for mercy. The mercy is not the father's mercy, and the father's not contingent upon what the son is doing or not doing. We'll get to that. Just hold on. <laughs> you think you know the story, but you don't know the story. <laughs> not his story anyway. <laughs> Father, I've sinned against you. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I wish you were dead. I mean, how bad can that be? But, and so, but then he goes on, he says, but you have, you treat me as one of your hired hands. So, we think, oh, but in the original language, the Greek, this was, the son was dictating to the father what the father should be doing. Mm -hmm. Now remember, it's an earthly story with the spiritual meaning. Who is the father? Who is the father in the story? It's God. Mm -hmm. Who are the sons? We are. We are. Yeah. Do you think you can tell God what to do and not to do? No. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, treat me as your ones. And he arose and came to the father, to his father. But while he was still a long way away, his father saw him, felt compassion, and ran, and embraced him, and kissed him. And the son said to, the fa said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no lo longer worthy to be called your son. That was very true. Mm -hmm. But the father said to his servants, now, you think the father's actually listening to what the son is saying? Because what does the father do? Bring quickly the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. 
Does the Father say, acknowledge what the Son is saying whatsoever? No. He could have said, you're right. <clears throat> now, this would have been the second or third shocking part of the story, that the Father was actually doing what every day? Praying. He's looking for who? Son. His son. And when it says, when he is far away, he was still a long way. So I'm sitting there, oh, he's got the, is he coming today? Is he not coming? So if he's doing this all day, that means what else is not happening? The other son. Oh, well, the, all, all the, everything else that this man is in charge of. Yeah. He's so concerned about the son that wished him dead, the son that who took all his stuff, the son who squandered it all, he's still longing for him to come home. Mm -hmm. And then he sees him, and he felt compassion. The Greek word, I love this Greek word, it's explotsomai, <coughs> meaning moved in your gut. Yeah. That's what it is. It literally means he was moved in his gut, stomach, but, you know, mm -hmm. compassion. He was... And Jesus, this is, Jesus uses this word, this is the same word that Jesus, that Luke uses when um, Jesus saw the 5,000 and he had compassion on him, he was explotsmite, he was moved in his gut. I mean, this is a gut wrenching. And he did what? He, had, he felt compassion and he did what? In verse 20. Father saw him, and he ran, and he ran, which would have been, what? Now, tell me, tell me, what did people wear in first century Judea? Those robes. Those robes. And he ran. And what happens when you run with a robe on? It comes He exposed himself for all to see, you know. Dignified men and dignified women didn't run. He walked. So here, if who's the father again? God. God ran. God ran? God ran toward him and embraced him and kissed him. From that very action, what does it say the father, what's the father thinking of his son? Does he love him or does he hate him? He loves him. He loves him. I mean, this is like huge. I mean, this is the son that wished him dead. This is mm -hmm. the son that took all his stuff, who squandered it all away. It would have been different. Maybe he went away, made a bunch of money, and came back. But he had nothing. So if this young man, who squandered all his stuff, he's so poor that he has to hire himself out to feed pigs, what do you think he's wearing? Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. He's probably has barely enough to cover up important places. Right. And what does the father do? Well, the son says, I've sinned against heaven, you know, I'll be your son. It's as if the father's not even paying attention. I mean, in, in the scenario, the father sees him, run, compassion, runs, embraces him, kisses him. The son wants to get his words out because up here, what does the father, what does the son practice in verse 18? Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer to be your servant. Treat me as one of your kind hired servants. He gets to the father, and he doesn't even finish his speech. Because what does the father do? Well, I think what he, and what he does is the son is, is talking, and he does this with his son's mouth. Mm -hmm. And he says to the servant, bring the best robe, bring the ring, bring the shoes. Now, He's walking around with bare feet, so shoes are important. What does is, what is the ring signify? Money. I'm valuable. Credit card. Here. <laughs> you can use it. The ring signified that he had the, the family crest, that he could go anywhere, okay. he could charge anything, and he would go... Yeah. Okay. And that meant that was going to be paid for. It was literally, he was giving to his son a credit card. What? What? You just squandered your inheritance, my and you know my money, and now I'm going to give you carte blanche to do that. And then the last, I think, the more important thing is, what else does the father give him? He gives him the shoes. He gives him the ring. The robe. Gives him not only any robe, but the what robe? The best. The best, the best robe. Give him. Put on the best robe. 
so that all will know who he is. Now, Sarah. <laughs> is Pastor Stecker calling what one yeah. the rest of the story? <laughs> We've noticed that your car warranty is worn out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Your credit card. Or your credit card. card. No, yeah, you don't have anything wrong with your credit card account, card. but. but it's a medical solid, brace. No. This is the last oh, time we're going to yes. call you. Sorry, oh, yeah. Medical brace. Right. Punch, nine if, punch <laughs> nine if you want to not be called again. So, oh, yeah. They say don't do that. I just hit. I off. Yeah, me too. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so he brings in the best room. Now, we said in the story, the father is God. Mm hmm. The father, I mean, the son sins against the father. The son squanders the blessings that the father has given to him. Hmm. Just like, like we us. squander the blessings that God gives to us. What is God still doing? Loves us. He looks for us. He looks for us, and then when he sees us coming, he runs toward us, he embraces us, kisses us, forgives us, and says... Put on the best robe. Well, what, as I mentioned before, what is the best robe that you have? Righteousness. The robe of righteousness. That's the robe that Christ gives to us, that the Father gives to us, that God gives to us. That's our best robe that we wear. What do we want to do with that best robe many times? Throw it away. We want to take it off and put on our... Own kind of thing. Or we want to wear whatever clothes underneath. And what does God continually do each and every day? He continues to put that robe of righteousness on. He does that when we remember our baptism. If you remember in the catechism, well, we remember our baptism. Does that mean we literally baptize ourselves? Oh, no. When we confess our sins and we remember that God forgives us. Or as I like to say, that God continues to put on the robe of righteousness on us each and every day. So that's what happens. And then we have verse 23, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate for my son was dead, is now alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. So we have this, you know, Jesus says this shocking story of the son who wishes his dad to be dead, squanders it all away, and the son comes back going to tell dad what he wanted to happen and the father totally ignores him because he says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And what is the father treat? How is the father treating him as? Or who is he treating him as? As his son. Because he gives him the ring. Carte blanche. Here's the credit card. You get whatever you want. I trust you. Everyone, what? You missed your opportunity. You should have grabbed it. I should have. I had a notion too, but I thought I better not be your church. Now, remember, how many sons were there? Two or two. Let's get to the the older son. Now the point of the it's together. They're not separate. They're together. And the question really is, who? Which one are you? Are you the younger son? or Are you the older son? That's the question. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and he drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. Hmm. And he called out to one of the servants and asked what thing what this meant. He said, "Your brother has come, and your father has killed a fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound." Now, the younger brother does, took the money, squandered it. The older son did the right thing and stayed and worked and worked very hard. 28, but he was angry and refused to go in. I'm not going in there. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, I have never disobeyed your commandment, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, who <coughs> killed, you killed a fattened cat for him. <coughs> and he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead, is alive, he was lost, and now he is found. So we have this the younger son who squanders everything away, who should be guilty. I mean, the father had every right not to forgive him, but the father forgives him. The older brother probably thinking, Dad has lost his mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not going in there. If I go in there, then I just said that what he did was okay. Is that really, did the father say it was okay? In the, all of this, did the father say, oh, don't worry about it. 
No. He doesn't even pay attention to what the son is saying. He says, best robe, ring, shoes, fat and calf. He's saying the son that was dead is now alive. The son has come to his senses. Now the question is, do you think that younger son will ever again wish his father to be dead? No, because what and he in, in the father even says to the older son, whatever is mine is yours. All you have to do is ask. And it's yours. So what is what is the response we should have in hearing this story? I don't have a good response because I think the father should have sent for the older son when the younger one came and they were going well, to celebrate. Well, his, his, he was out in the field. I mean, and who knows how quickly this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. But the father does go out. He doesn't send a servant. He goes out. He goes out him. and he, when we say entreated, he pleaded with him. Mm -hmm. That would be a better word. He pleaded with his older son, would you come in? Come on, come on. And we're never told if the older son did or not. Mm -mm. The older son was not going to forgive his younger brother. Right. I mean, from this, we read, and, and the father is saying, I have forgiven him. This all is mine. <laughs> it's all mine. You make no claim on it, but I give it to you. What does God the Father do with us? All this is mine, God says. It's not yours, but I give it to you. His son. Yeah, through Jesus. I mean, all the spiritual blessings, and then you can throw in all the material blessings as well. But we're going to deal with spiritual blessings. And really, the top one, the Father shows his compassion, mercy, forgiveness. And he puts on him the, be the best robe, the robe of righteousness with that. So, which then goes back to the Old Testament. You will say in, in that day, what day? What is the younger son's response to all of this? What should be his, what do you think he's, how is he responding to that? To what his father did? Was he sad or happy? He's just happy, happy. Was he, was he grateful and thankful or did he think he deserved it? I think he thought he deserved it. Well, I don't think so because <laughs> I, I think, because we're going to go with the rest of the readings and, well, and how yeah. the younger son, even though, you know, God forgives us. Mm -hmm. Do we deserve God's forgiveness? Mm -hmm. no, 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 we don't deserve God's forgiveness, but God mm -hmm. gives it to us anyways. And what is our response to that? It should be what? He's a God of well, let's go to chapter Isaiah chapter 12, the, end, the rest of verse 1. You will say in that day where God has forgiven you, he was giving you all these blessings, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. We're going to sing that again this morning. But joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known to all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. So according to Isaiah, in that day, what should we be doing? Taking the Lord. And thanking the Lord for what? His blessings. His blessings, namely salvation. That he has saved us. Saved you and me. The son was planning on coming back and being a slave to the father. That's what his plan was. I'll be one of your servants and I'll work it off. The father says, uh, no. You're my son. That will never change. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Good thanks to the Lord. Da, da, da. So, when, when, and the, the motivation behind, I mean, after the son realizes he's forgiven, he's going to receive all these <clears throat> blessings, and we'll say the natural response will be Isaiah 12, I will give thanks to the Lord for the salvation he's given to us. Do you think if the father ever asked the younger son to do anything, do you think the son would do it? Knowing that his father loves him no matter what. Probably not. 
I think he will, because that would be our natural response. Our response, when God, when we realize that God has forgiven us all our sins, forgiven us of the debt of our sins, and says all is forgiven, we say, oh, thank you. Our response should be what when God asks us to do things? Oh, yes. I will do it because what God has done for me. Now, we're simple human beings, and what will happen to us each and every day? What do we want to do with that robe of righteousness? We want to take it off. What do we want to do with the ring? And what does God do every day when we come and confess our sins? Put it back on. Puts the ring back on. He says, you're still my son, you're still my daughter. I guess I'm still mad at the young son. <laughs> that makes sense. Me too. I think, that's, and I think the reason why Jesus gives us this, because we're like the older son saying, not fair. Yeah. I did my part. And more. But as a parent, though, you love your children Correct. regardless right. of right. what they do. I mean, I mean, you may love your child, but you hate the sin. Yeah. Remember, the father in the story is who? God. God. How God treats us. We are either going to be the younger son and squander whatever God has given to us, or we'll be the older son who lives by the law. I've done this, that, and the other thing for you, God. I've asked for nothing, God. And God's, and the father's saying, well, actually, I've given you. You, you have a roof over your, you have clothes. You, you probably have a ring already. You don't even realize how important that is. Because I think a lot of those times when we receive God, when God forgives us, oh, this is great, and then God says, I want you to forgive others, we'll go, oh, well, mm, uh, mm. like yesterday in the national news, who did they let off scot-free? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. I'm going, wait a minute, <clears throat> that's not fair. fair. That's not Even the problem. mayor and the police chief of Chicago yeah. said, yeah. Not, not fair, fair. not fair. He's really getting a publicity now. That's yeah. what he wanted oh, in the yeah. first place. So he's really now, getting it. from a very spiritual sense, that's what God does. He lets us off scot free, and it's not fair. fair. That I think the the point is, you know, on that day you will give thanks to God. Yes, life is not fair. Thank God, God is not fair. Because if God was fair, we would all be doomed. So, the father forgives the younger son. The older son still needs to learn that. Just like we do. But like you said, a parent's love, and especially a mother's love for their children, beyond imagination. Right. There's nothing, even though that child may be the worst of all sinners of all time, he's still my child. She is still my child. I will still love that person. And we're all going, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. You should leave. You should deny. You should say, but what do we do? Mm. All right. This is hard. This is hard stuff. That's why I love this. <laughs> I'm beginning to love Lent 4C because it is, it stretches us. Because we go, oh, we can be angry at the younger son. He's going out of the way. The father's crazy. So we're the oldest. <laughs> well, and Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. The point is this, God forgives no matter what. Well, regarding the older son, um, God is telling us to reframe how we look at everything. Yes. You know, and we're looking through one lens and he says, no, mm -hmm. the real one is over here. Right. And that's kind of like what Martin Luther did. Oh, yeah. I mean, many, many people yes. throughout. Oh, yes. Is that we have to look at things through God's eyes. Correct. Right? And, and that's, yeah. this is, you know, when they, when you know, he said, now tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near Jesus to hear him. The Pharisees and the scribes would have said, oh, those are tax collectors and sinners. Mm -hmm. They are hopeless people. They are not part of the kingdom of God. Why is Jesus, who's claiming himself to be the very son of God, why is he hanging out with those people, and why isn't Jesus hanging out with us? In the story of the tax collectors and sinners, slash Pharisees and scribes, 
Who are the tax collectors and sinners? Are they the younger son or the older son? These are the people who sin and now come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. Yeah. They're the younger son. The Pharisees and the scribes are the yeah. older son saying, "Why, Jesus, why are you wasting your time on them? They're nobodies. They're, they're, they are not us, Jesus. And Jesus is going, and he's telling us, he goes, you don't even see it. You don't even see it. That God forgives all. Jesus came for all. I like the last two lines of the gospel. Yes. Son, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, because your brother was dead and is alive, right. was lost and has been found. Correct. You were always with me. Now hopefully the, the older son will learn from the father how the father loves and forgives no matter what. That's because but we don't know that. We don't know the end of the story. Okay. I mean, but it's a story. But mm -hmm. what do we hope? What do we hope? Yeah. Then he would. Right. But that's why it ends as it does. Many times Jesus' parables just end and you're going, mm -hmm. so what happened next? Mm -hmm. And really the parable is about who? Yourself. 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 Yeah. How, do we, how, how does our story end? Right. Are we, do we realize the Father's forgiveness and his love no matter what? Mm -hmm. Or do we say, wait a minute. It's not fair. I mean, the Pharisees and the scribes are going, they don't deserve. We, we did all this. We're doing all this work. And they're just getting in. Not fair. That's what they're saying. Yes. On Sunday, uh, since we're doing matins, we'll do the psalm. I did put the intro in there. And they're kind of the same thing. So. <laughs> I mean, they're both written by David. They're both in response. Psalm 51 is in response to the sin that he had with Bathsheba. Psalm 32 is in response to a sin. Another sin might be with Bathsheba, but he doesn't use the exact same words. But we know these. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Um, for a day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Where have you heard that before? <laughs> and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Part of our confession absolution in Divine Service 3, page 15. Therefore, let anyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not... Uh, reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. This is the Lord speaking to us. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, um, which must be curbed uh, with bit and bridle, uh, and it will not uh, stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but the steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord, be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart.